So our job costing tab got a little bit of an overhaul here. We can now, if you have the bookkeeping spreadsheet, you can now connect to two here. So we're going to take the bookkeeping spreadsheet URL up until edit. So it's gonna look like this into here and you're gonna copy and paste it into cell B9 where it has the URL. So this URL is going to be replaced with your bookkeeping spreadsheet URL. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna pull up all of the associated job name from that URL that you put it into. So you wanna make sure that your records are accurate, but I can change this to another job name and it's gonna change what my expenses were for that job. This is gonna take the after tax amount of those expenses, because those are the ones that we want to compare. And it's gonna be automatically inserted into here. Now, if you don't want to do this, that's totally fine. You can delete this value, delete this value, and you can insert your total cost of sale based on what you've calculated. You can do it line by line or just have a total amount that you can insert here if you want to override this. This is why we tell you to make a master file for your budget and estimate spreadsheet and then make a copy for every estimate that you make of that master file starting from scratch. So the things that don't change, like your materials, your production rates, your employees, have that all inserted for your budget and then copy that as a master file so that any estimate you make off of that is going to be a copy of that master file. So any overrides that you do here is not going to change that master file. So that's this is now automated. And we can now go all the way over to here and see that we just got a couple basic more visual ways of comparing the estimated percentage to the actual percentage. Now, this is just using a mock spreadsheet that we've connected it to with the, the uh, bookkeeping spreadsheet. But this is kind of just to show you that you can do it now a visual check with this pie chart and these percentages of how you actually did versus your estimated. What this quote tab does is it prepares a sales quote. Now you can call this whatever you want, invoice, sales quote, you can change that there and you can insert your business logo here. So I'm gonna to go to insert and I'm gonna do image, insert image in the cell. And I am, let's see if I have, I'm gonna upload. Let's go to desktop. Let's just do a quick, how to hardscape. We'll just do a quick logo here. And that'll be inserted into there. That's just my embroidery one, but you can change that however you want. You can also change these headers here, the color of them to match the color of your brand. So you can go to fill and you can choose the color of your brand to be able to change that to match what you are going for there. You can do that for all of those. And this automatically inserts the materials that you put into your cost of sale tab, the quantity, the unit, the cost of unit, and the total. So this is going to provide you with a sales invoice or a sales quote of a line item dollar by dollar. Now, I don't recommend doing this and sending this to your client, but we have been asked by users of this to put this together for them because they do line item pricing. I do not do line item pricing. I don't like line item pricing. I send just a round number with the total of what it is for each work area. Work area is not included in this just yet. We might do that in the coming years with the spreadsheet as another update. But for now, you have line item pricing of whatever you put into the materials tab here. It'll automatically show up in here. And we've got more than enough room with for everything. The final thing here is labor, overhead, profit. This is the calculated amount based on the estimate that we've already done with this and all the information here. You can change all of this to include whatever you need for your company, your company address, whatever you need to do. And if you want to send this to a client, uh, essentially I would delete all of these rows because this is the total of my quote. So I would highlight those from the side here. I would right click and I would click delete rows 30 to 56. I'm not gonna do that just yet because I'm gonna show you how you would send this to your client. So I would click at the bottom here. I would highlight all that all the way to the top. So now everything that I want in my quote is highlighted. I would go to file and I would go to print. I've got this, that's 
looks fine as obviously it spills onto the next page but that is going to include everything that's why i would delete these to get it all on one page if it was a small quote i'm going to go to next it's going to send to chrome print and instead of sending to my printer i'm going to save as pdf so that's going to give me a nice pdf and i'm going to hit save and that's going to give me a pdf downloaded to that to my computer that I can then send to my client. So that's how I'm going to go about doing that. Now, if this is not enough room for your quote, what you can do is you can right click, you can insert one row below, and you can essentially for each of these, just click that box and pull it down. And it's going to provide you with more space based on your quote and what you are sending off. And you can do that multiple times. So you don't have to do that with just one. If I have, if I need two, I can insert one row below, insert one row below, and I can go to this one and drag, and that's going to then insert that for me. And I can do that for all of these now. So nice, fast process to be able to do this and send it off to your client. Now, continuing with this, this also does the exact same thing for your work order. Work order is something that you might send to your foreman or for yourself. It's going to have the actual at uh, the estimated time that you have for this job. This job has already been estimated and you are going to have all of the materials, might, but it won't have the pricing. It'll have quantity square foot. And then on site, you can print this out on site. You can have the quantity used and jot that down for your own information. It's going to automatically pull the employees that you have inserted on your labor cost tab. That's going to automatically pull them up here so that everyone knows who's going to be on that site at any given time. We also have the estimated time that's going to be pulled up. And at the bottom here, we've got the production rates. So any square foot amount of time. So we did this estimate already. This is going to be automatically inserted here. The square foot and the amount of hours for the certain type of part of the project that is going on. So excavation is 10,000 square feet at 100 amount in hours. And as you can see, we can insert the time in and time out to give us an automatic one hour for this. Or we can just override this and put in how many hours this is going to take us to just simply override that if you don't want to go and mess around with the amount of time. So you can see that our time amount accumulated time hours is now 11 hours as opposed to one, or I can control Z this and we've only got one hour on this job. This, this helps to streamline the process of note taking in the field, as opposed to thinking about what your production rates are. This will give you a constant record of production rates in comparing your production rate to what you estimated. See what's wrong, see what's right in your estimating process. And now I can go back up here and we're at one hour for that accumulated project. If we want to print this off as well and to send it to our foreman, we can go to the bottom here, bottom right, click all the way to the top. Everything is highlighted that we want printed. And once again, print, next, and we're going to save as PDF. That's going to give us a copy that we can send to anyone that we want. Once again, material order is something that you would send to your supplier. So you can put your company logo in there, change the headers. Again, this is going to print. This is going to pull everything that you have quoted on the project off. And you can then click to the bottom here and pull up to the top. And once again, print next. PDF and send it to your supplier to order that material. The budgeting portion of this has been added. This just gives you a little bit more of a visual of where you want to be in your business, where you previously were in your business, what the previous year's actual sales were compared to what you budgeted, and then your budgeting goal for this year. So once again, this connects to the bookkeeping spreadsheet. If you want it to, if you have it, you'll just copy and paste that link up until edit into cells D3, D7, D8, and D9. So it's this row, D3, you would then replace this with your URL from your budget, from your bookkeeping spreadsheet, and D7, D8, and D9. This is gonna pull your expenses for cost of sale, employment costs, and overhead expenses that you actually spent 
based on your bookkeeping spreadsheet to give you your previous year's actual sales, cost of sale, employment costs, overhead expenses, which we can then give you your profit percentage and what your profit was. These are just, this is just a mock bookkeeping spreadsheet that I quickly put together to give us what we actually did there. Now you can see based on our previous year, this is what we budgeted. So this is taking into account what you budgeted in your spreadsheet for overhead expenses, employees, uh, especially the business operations tab here in terms of what your time you budgeted for the season. The only thing that this doesn't pull in automatically is the cost of sale. You may want to include that number as a percentage of your previous year budgeted expenses and just put that into there. Your profit percentage again comes from your budgeted amounts on that estimate tab. So this is going to be automatic. It gives you a nice visual of what your budgeted was amount for the previous year, what your actual was for the previous year, and now this year where you want to be in terms of that budgeted amount. So this is going to take your previous year's actual amount, not the budgeted amount, because you can see this business was obviously off quite a bit in terms of what their previous year actual sales was and compared to their what their budgeted amount was. So we're quite a bit off. So we're going to then say that this business wants to increase their sales by 200%. That means that this has been increased by 200% here. That's a multiple of 200% there. And this is going to then automatically increase each of these by 200% over here to see kind of what our cost of sales likely going to be to hit that 200% rate, what the employment costs are going to be to hit that 200% rate, and so on. We can then change the profit percentage to then give us what our likely budget will be for this year helps to give you a little bit more visual of employment costs. Who can we hire to get to this number? Uh, how much would be included? You know, if we only have one employee, how many more employees should we hire in terms of getting to that 200% year sales goals? How much space does that, how much room does that give us to grow in terms of that? It gives us a nice little round breakdown of what that looks like in our business. And finally, the cost analysis tab just gives us a little bit of, uh, this is more so for fun for you to be able to see what it costs you to own versus rent in your business and what delivery versus pickup would be in your business. So the own versus rent category kind of gives you uh, what the cost would be if you were to own a piece of equipment. So what that that cost is for that piece of equipment, how many years of use would you get out of it? And what is that resale value of it? And then that'll automatically based on your time in your business operations tab, tell you what the daily cost, weekly cost, monthly cost of that, that equipment is and what that seasonal yearly cost of that equipment is based on the, how many years you said you're going to get out of it. These blue ones you would then insert for rent, what the daily rental fee is for your area for that piece of equipment, weekly, monthly, and how many approximate number of daily rentals you would get need to have based on that rental. And basically what that's going to do is just take a multiple of 30 times the 300 daily rate to give us that 9,000 total cost on the season. If we were to rent it compared to the total cost on the season, 6,000, if we were to own it now, some, there's a lot of things that don't get taken into this calculation that we want to highlight here. The additional considerations like having a trailer, if you don't have a trailer for that piece of equipment, maintenance, transportation, downtime, labor involved in that downtime, that loss of labor, storage, insurance, and fuel. And then additional considerations for renting would be things like time to pick up, time to drop off, the time allotted for that, or the delivery fee of that piece of equipment. So this tax rate would be the tax rate that you are taxed based on income in your business, based on the profit in your business. What is that tax rate for you? Because this, the rental fee is 100% tax deductible in terms of it is part of your cost of sale when you rent as opposed to your if you own a piece of equipment, it is deductible. It is depreciating assets. So you, you don't get quite that 100% deduction right away with that piece of equipment. Of course, contact an accountant to understand this a little bit more and to get what 
it is in terms of your area, your business, and where you are located, because this is going to vary. Delivery versus pickup or pickup costs. This helps you understand how much you should be delivering versus maybe going to pick up. I am very dedicated to getting as much delivered as possible to my job sites. So for example, hours would be inserted there to send our employee or send ourselves to go pick that up and come back to the job site. So one and a half hours, one way there, waiting at the yard to get loaded and then coming back one and a half hours, we can then assign who which employee is going to go do that. So if it was our foreman based on their cost per hour, this is how much they would cost us. And the overhead also involved in that one and a half hour based on our overhead expenses, based on our budget here. Uh, number of employees on the crew would get inserted there to let us know what our total cost would be in going to send that employee to go pick it up. There's additional considerations here like fuel costs, loss of product productivity on the job site, especially if it's you, the owner, going to pick it up or a foreman and the also the risk associated with going to go pick that up and having somebody on the road with your equipment. Uh, as opposed to the delivery costs, you would then insert what your delivery costs are uh, for you in your area. Just a nice little round number to give you a more visual of what it costs you to actually go pick up versus going to get delivered with this cost analysis here.